Hey, okay, I'm here again. Welcome back to that damn Billy. Um, wow, I've had, you know, I've had a couple of weeks to think of things. I've had like all these topics on my mind. And, you know, I was looking at the demographics of, of, of my literal tens of watchers. <laughs> and, but I was looking at the demographics and, and demographically, like, it looks like 75% of the people watching me are men. 25% are women and like 100% are over 55, which like I'm cool with that. You know, I mean, you know, that's I, I want to talk to people my age. I'm totally cool with that. But at the same time, I don't think that that means I have nothing to say to younger people or that we have nothing to say to younger people. And um, but one of the things that makes me conscious of this is that when you do reach a certain age, almost anything you say can be seen as a rant. And, um, and, and, you know, and, and, and I thought about this the other day because, and, and, and those of you of a certain age will really, really relate to this. We grew up at a time when we went to department stores, you know, and, um, and I, and I am going to do an entire thing on department stores. I want to walk young people through a real department store someday, um, either written or, or, or spoken. But, um, when you went to any store, back in our day or back you know in the earth there were mirrors everywhere everywhere you turned there was a fucking mirror you, you had no choice but to see yourself in a mirror you tried on a hat there was a mirror you know and now and and i know it sounds like i'm fetching and whatnot but you know you go to the mall and, I, and the only two stores i go to in the mall are zara and h and i'll be honest i go to the fast fashion i look at it i don't necessarily buy it but i look at it because it gives me kind of i know it's all designer ripoffs and since i don't hit the like the designer stores anymore it gives me a little idea what younger people are wearing i don't buy it myself you know um but i just i don't even buy clothes anymore but i i kind of check them out to kind of see what's what's happening what is kind of fresh in 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 the fast fashion industry of like like a zara or a forever 21 I don't go, I don't go in there because I'm afraid to like send out I don't know amber alerts or something like that but um, oh that made me think about mall walkers too <laughs> anyway but um, where was I talking about I completely forgot what I was talking about oh oh so I went and I, and I tried on a cap I went to H&M and I tried on a cap I had to like walk all around and I knew this cap looked foolish because I knew when I, it was five bucks and it was like it looked like something that not Snuffy Smith um, who yeah Snuffy Smith would have worn in the comics you know it had earlugs that came down but I thought for five bucks I might be willing to look like a stupid idiot you know I don't know just for fun on something and um, but I, I put it on my head I had to walk like like all around the store to find a mirror to see whether I look stupid or not, you know, and I thought, oh my God, there used to be mirrors everywhere. So when I say that, it's not that I'm ranting. I accept the mirror situation as it is today, but I just do wish that people of a younger age could have had the pleasure of, of just like never had to last do you have a mirror? I mean, even the sunglass hut, you don't necessarily, some of them are not well mirrored. And it's like, or best yet is when you go to a department store or attempt to try on sunglasses and they put the security tag right over the bridge of the nose. That gives me a great idea how these are going to look, you know? So, um, yeah. So when I'm, when I'm, it's not, I'm just more or less saying there was a time when it wasn't like that. You know, somebody would have handed you the sunglasses with a mirror <laughs> besides the fact that there was a mirror on every inch of the counter, you know, but somebody would have handed you the sunglasses, you would have put them on and they'd have handed you a mirror. So yeah, so I just, it's just, um, it's just a different of rea difference of realities. I'm not bitching about things the way they are today. So, so not every, if I'm going to rant, I'll let you know, I'm going to rant. But anyway, getting back to reality. I, so I, I have asked, you know, my, my, my tens of watchers to like, well, tell me what you'd like to talk about. And one friend had heard me speak of depression and he said, well, he would like to hear me talk about depression and, and, and how to overcome it without medication, you know, naturally. And, and somebody else said, talk about anal sex. <laughs> you know, so I guess these, these are two topics I'm pretty much authorities on. <laughs> So why not take advantage? You know, what, what, what do they always tell writers? Write what you know. But um, but no, as far as depression, you know, I, I I would never advise anybody. I mean, I I have nothing. I I use an antidepressant. I have for years. The the type of antidepressants that most people are given today are not of a type that 
that, um, I mean, you know, I use Prozac. I don't even know if it does anything anymore. I just use it. I still use it. The doctor gives it to me. I use it. I've used it for 25 years, at, at, at least. So who knows what is maybe fucked with my brain chemistry, but whatever. But um, I can't tell you that I see this grand difference when I use it. But I will tell you that if I, any time over the past 25 years or so that I've went off of, of um, these type of um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like uh, there's Paxil, there's Fluoxetine, which is Prozac. There's several of them. I, I'm not a medical, don't, I, I, but, but any time I've been off of them and, and thought, okay, I'm going to stop taking this. It's not like I've gotten profoundly depressed or anything like that, but I definitely, that's when I realized how much they really did help me because, um, you know, like I can get to the point where like, I want to, I'll start crying when I see a pigeon with a ruffled feather or a toe missing. And like, you know, if that's a lot of people say, well, maybe this is the reality we need to feel. I don't know that, 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 that can become kind of like just not necessarily the reality. Plus I have so many friends that desperately could use, I mean, they're horribly depressed all the time. And anytime I say to them, well, have you considered it? Well, my doctor wants me to take Prozac, but I don't want it to alter the way I feel. Well, but a good part of your time, your the way you feel is altering the quality of your life. So I would never, you know, I don't really know um, you know, that maybe some people are always going to need something to help them with depression. This is part of the age we live in. My parents didn't take antidepressants. My aunt, my grandparents, they didn't, didn't take antidepressants. But you know what? They had a different lifestyle than we have today. And plus, depression wasn't recognized. But if most of us look back in our family, there was some pretty fucked up behavior. You know, and how did they treat it? Well, they treated themselves with alcohol or, a, a, in my one grandmother's case, um, phenobarbital, which was available over the counter. And, you know, I mean, like, you know, so so people have been self-medicating for years and there were not much treatment to, for, for mild depression. In fact, unless people were having psychotic episodes or not, not what, they would just say, well, you know, if it was a woman, well, you know, she's nervous, <laughs> she's high strung. And if a guy fell off the edge, he'd gone haywire, you know. So, you know, we live in a different world today. So I, I, I don't, um, I, 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 I don't know. I am, I'm a pro, whereas I'm not, I'm not like really into taking a lot of medications. I don't have to, but there are certain things that I, that I do take or that I use that enhance the quality of my life. And, and in, in that, and in that fact, I'm willing to more or less measure out what the long-term side effect i use testosterone have been for a long time i'm not going to deny it you know but when i started doing it and i realized what an impact it made on the way i felt i had to make a decision then and there if i'm going to continue doing this i have to accept that there are certain risks involved there may be a heightened risk to um prostate cancer or whatnot but you know i, I that's my choice. I'm willing to make that choice. My blood pressure is not, my blood pressure has been high since I was a child. So it had no bearing on my blood pressure. But I'm just saying, it's like with anything in, in life, but particularly with depression or, or mental illness or anything of that, you don't know, see a professional and, and reach out to people and talk and ask the question just like you asked. Um, but, you know, see somebody, but, but don't just eschew an antidepressant or a, 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 a what it as they call it, psychopharmaceutical, you know, uh, med medication, you know, um, if it might, because it, it may just, you may only need it for like three months, you know, like not everybody I have chosen, once again, this is one of the choices I've made that like, no, for quality of life, you know. Um, so anyway, but now, then let's get on to anal sex. <laughs> what is the thing with anal sex? Um, you know, Okay, I don't know what they wanted me to say about anal sex. I just get, guess they figured it would make for great clickbait, and I suppose it does. Um, you know, I, I, um, yeah, all I'm going to say is I do not think that anal sex is exclusive so much anymore to uh, male on male or, you know, to gay or bisexual intercourse. Um, 
you know, I, I think even, you know, regardless of our, our, our sexual orientation, you know, I mean, our gender identity, but our sexual orientation, a lot of men, a lot of gay men may come out of the closet younger wanting to be on the active side of anal, of, 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 of anal sex, you know, because they, they kind of might fantasize about it or, or they may be shamed into going the other direction because to be as uh, today we would say a top or bottom, but to be, be, see a bottom is often almost spoken of disdainfully within our, this is getting off on a topic I didn't even want to go. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. Um, you know, I just want, but no, but as far as, but you know, um, so, I mean, the whole thing about anal sex, there's, there's the who's on top, who's on bottom, but let's, the basic physical functions of it. Let's go to the basic physical functions of it. Okay. For some reason, they, when they designed the male body, <laughs> they decided to put the prostate where they did, which like, for some men can be as erotic as having their penis touch. So it's like, it's like getting two for one, you know, for the stimulation. They really get off on the stimulation. Ergo, this is why a lot of men do not, you know, when they, this is why men, we don't talk to each other, men of a certain age, we don't really talk to each other because of, um, of what's going on as, as the aging process. Like we all know that women are going to go through menopause and, 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 possibly grow a mustache and have that. I mean, you know, there's commercials out there, but you know, man, we don't talk about that stuff that much, primarily because it's going to get into a visual, eventually talking about the digital exam of our prostate. And um, men don't like to talk about that, particularly heterosexual men. And one of the great reasons they don't like to talk about it and that they find it so shameful, it's not that they find it so terribly painful. It's really, I can't believe they find it that terribly painful because anything that comes out is probably three times the size of that doctor's finger. So it's not that they find it so painful. It's about feeling invaded. It's about feeling invaded. And there is also the factor that a lot of men get an erection when when the doctor sticks his finger up their butt and for a straight man to have this this reaction to this digital prostate exam it, it fucks with their head you know and particularly if like oh maybe they like it you know like my doctor says to me he'll always every year he's like well you're lucky i have small fingers <laughs> i always want to tell him, well feel free to use two or three you know like i mean it's like trust me been there but um, no, you know, anal sex, I mean, and, 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 and gentlemen, let me tell you something, and, and I don't have a lot, I'm not one of these gay guys that talks to a lot of women or whatnot, but I get around and I've worked in bars and I've worked with a lot of female bartenders and whatnot, and um, we, I realize that heterosexual men in the last in the last quarter century have been lucky enough to find, to, to discover that we do have nipples that are tactile and have feelings because I didn't know that until I was like 26 years old, you know, and I'm a gay man. And I, I mean, I remember the first time I had a partner that went after my nipples, like, the fuck you doing? You know, and it's like, but then I learned, wow, these things, they got some power to them. And, um, so, you know, and, and, and I notice if what I see in porn or if what I see with, what I know about heterosexual men, like, you know, their old ladies are playing with their nipples these days and, and they're into it. But, but that being aside, like the girls are talking and we know that a lot of you guys, you're digging a finger up the butt, you know, and, and like, so it's okay. Go for it. I mean, it's pleasurable. It brings a pleasure response. It often for the benefit of a man who is, on top, whether it be anal or vaginal or whatever, often, oftentimes that finger up the butt makes that wood go from wood to <laughs> wood eye. You know, I mean, like it can really increase some um, your erectile response. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I happen to know that a lot of the, a lot of men and women these days they're engaging. They're, they're not engaging into sixty nine. It's more like seventy or seventy one. It's sixty nine with a finger or two up his butt. So, um, you know, but so I, I really don't have anything. I mean, I I could I can do, I can do it thirty minutes of of a rift on on anal sex and, and experiences I've had and that we've all had and I, and y'all gonna scream and yell TMI, TMI, TMI. But you know, um, no, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm being more serious here, but um, you know, and, 
and um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> I know anal sex, I, for me particularly, I'm much more of a giver than a receiver, but you know, hey, either one can be pretty enlightening, uh, you know, when you're with the right partner, so, um, you know, I don't know that we, I don't know that we necessarily need to uh, this, now I'm trying. I'm trying to tie together. I'm trying to tie together depression and anal sex. But I'm thinking like, okay, how do I bring this together here? You're gonna bring this together, McConaughey. But um, you know, I'm, I don't know that necessarily sex is the treatment for all emotional issues. But in fact, in in fact, it can be the very root of some emotional and and mental just issues. You know, obsession with sex or whatnot. But all again, I, it is. I think that even when we're feeling emotionally vulnerable, that is a time when you know we may least want physical contact, but most need it. And there's a difference between what we want and what we need. And and um, you know, and I think any but any couple has been together of any um, of any gender or sexual orientation mixed thereof um has has at one time or in their in other in their past or maybe in their early relationships had um had an issue where they had a great uh, disagreement about something i don't want to say a fight um but some people maybe it might kind of do a fight but where they've had a disagreement about something that that has really awakened in them a uh, um uh, uh, a passion that you know they end up using sex as you know uh, that is makeup sex that's what they call it they call it makeup sex so you know i'm not inventing this shit so you know it, it's always kind of um it can be a, a mood booster for depression i mean one of the first things that they ask you if they're trying to identify you whether uh, how your depression is about you know your mood your appetite and your your libido and um because, uh, you know, this stuff's just all related. So, I don't know. So, I guess, like, uh, you know, that's it. That's it. The ins and outs on anal sex <laughs> and depression. Later.